Here I am in 1941 with my grandparents, Homer and Mary Shoup, who traveled from North Dakota to Texas for several winters in the 1930s. Homer loved to fish and they were escaping the North Dakota winters. They visited relatives along the way, including Homer's sister, Annie, in Pawnee, Oklahoma, and Mary's brother, Bird, in Iowa Colony, Texas. Mary's journal for three of the trips still exists, along with the photographs taken by Homer in this video. The video narration includes a few excerpts from Mary's journal. The whole journal text and the photographs are all included in the book, The Traveling Shoops. Here is a Shoop family outing in the bus taken about 1930. This is just part of their extended family and includes my dad, Max Shoup, with his brother, Roscoe Shoup, who is holding the fish. The vehicle they took to Texas for two of the trips in 1934-35 and 1935-36 was a Chevrolet LQ International 14-seater coach. Their youngest ro child, Roscoe, accompanied them on these two trips. For the 1936-37 trip, they stayed in various accommodations while searching for a trailer. Homer ended up building a trailer when they returned to Stanley. Mary calls Homer dad in the journal. Here the bus is parked near the Shoup family uh, farmhouse with Edna on the fender and Mary and Roscoe holding the cat. The Shoop bus is all one color and they had just one bus, but we'll see another bus like it in this video. Mary always spelled it with a bus with a double S. Here, Mary is, uh, is perhaps holding John Schubert with Dorothy Fenstermacher in the bus. And this may have been about the same day in 1930 as the outing picture, though Mary is dressed differently. Here is Mary with the bus at a camp. The signs say it may be McElroy Park in Jamestown, North Dakota. In her diary, her journal, she is saying on December 3rd, 1934, after leaving at 8 a.m., we soon came to the Black Hills or tail end of them. The Mobrera River Road curved all through small hills covered with jack pines and Black Hill spruce. We saw many pheasants, drove to Taylor where we had dinner picked up a couple hitchhiking from Washington to Hastings, left them at Taylor, came to Grand Island, had bad roads from Sweetwater, snow plows, one place two men were shoveling, met two truckloads of CCC boys who had been out shoveling on highway number two, stayed at a farmer's place. They are quarantined for scarlet fever so haven't learned their name. We drove 201 miles and it's not quite so cold. On December 4th, it's dad's birthday. Dad shot a squirrel. I'm cooking the squirrel so that we can eat it tomorrow. On Saturday, January 19th, 1935, dad fell in the river yesterday, cut his hands on oysters he went after a shrimp box that had gotten loose, stepped in a hole and fell in the oyster reef. 
had to change to the skin. Family here from St. Louis named Watson. He's a sign painter. It's interesting that they found another couple with a similar vehicle. The Watson's bus is painted in a darker color by the windows. There is no description of being with them in the snow. In this picture, there are two unidentified women and two children off to the left. Near the bus are Roscoe, Mary, and Goldie and Earl Watson. Saturday, January 26, 1935, a German boat came in. Myself, Mrs. Watson, and Jenna all waved. They answered, and on Sunday, three sailors on boat, all cleaned up, came down to look around. Mr. Watson happened to be around camp, and only one could talk English. He asked where we lived, and he pointed to our buses. Then he wanted to know how far to town. They wanted beer. There is no mention in Mary's journal of Watson's bus being stuck in the mud. This may be Goldie on the fender, Mary, another woman, Earl Watson, and Roscoe Shoup on the tractor. Here is another family they met in their travels, and it looks like they had good luck fishing that day. From Mary's journal, Wednesday, January 30, 1935. Dad caught a 10 and a half pound red, 28 inches long. No going away now. Gave it to Tom Sawyer. He sold it for 50 cents. Had a dandy flounder on Thursday. Dad stays at the beach all day now, standing in the surf, trying to beat the record. Nice and warm again. Jen Jenna and I walked about. Big boat from Italy in after sulfur. The folks next door had a fight. March 1st, 1935. Picked oranges from the trees, also grapefruit. Got up at 545. All went out to Boca Chica in Earl's car. Found some more shells. Ate a picnic. Dinner cooked wieners over Percy's fire, fishing poor. Came home, found new neighbors from Oklahoma. This photo shows Roscoe Shoup, Mary, Goldie Watson, and others. Perhaps the man in the tall hat is Earl Watson. February 19, 1936. Men went to town. Roscoe and Dad went on a Holland ship named Bermdike and the Edge Hill, an American boat. April 10. Left Strasbourg at 7 a.m. No snow, only small drifts along roads. Had dinner north of Washburn. Some snow, but only in old drifts. Encountered first bad road at Wilton then got worse farther we went. Got over to Highway 8 at 7.30. Had to pull one car out before we could pass. December 23, 1936. Drove all over Houston looking for trailers, but could not find just what we want. January 1st, 1937. Raining and rained near all night. Drove down to Texas City in afternoon, then came home. Ate bowl of oyster soup, then went to Danbury to see a trailer. Didn't suit, so went to Angleton. Thursday, January 7th. Warm wind blowing, all packed to leave. Dad has been fooling away a week now trying to get a trailer built. But it's all talk, so suppose we will be on our way. February 15, 1937, nice warm day. Men all went fishing before noon. I washed clothes, 
Mrs. J and I are going rambling around this afternoon. We sure did. Walked out to the dock about one and a half miles. Walked and were we sore footed. Stopped at a cool drink stand. Had root beer, rested a while, then came on in. The men came in with 22 fish, nice ones. Had a drum for supper, hottest day of all. Was on the standard oil freighter, talked to the painter. The ship was loading crude. In this picture, Homer is on the right and is fishing uh, with his fishing partners. This may be the day they came in with 22 fish. The large ones in front are paddlefish, which are now protected in Texas. Homer did build a trailer which they used for camping. Here it is on the trip they took in 1943 moving their daughter Florence's family to Washington State. Homer, Mary, and Florence, with her youngest child, rode in the cab of the truck. The rest of Florence's children, except one, rode in the back of the truck, sitting on a wooden plank placed across boxes. Homer also built these little cars, which their daughter Edna and her husband Bob McGill are driving. Homer took these little cars to fairs and sold rides in them and also let the grandkids drive them. <music> 